Right, so it's about time we had some nature appreciation on this channel. So today we're going to be having a look at some of the most insane and majestic things that Mother Nature has to offer. All right, first up, newly discovered species Northern Green Anaconda is the world's biggest snake, 26 feet and 440 pounds. Crikey, that is colossal. That is many, many times the size of this person. Who, by the way, is very bold for swimming alongside it. I mean, I'm guessing the snake is safe, but given it got to grow this big in these waters, that means other things could grow to be this big. That is massive. A majestic start, but this guy is an absolute nutcase for swimming alongside it. Why is the guy an offer satire? Good question. It's Freak Vonk. He's pretty much the Dutch Steve Owen. No way. Crazy Dutch, but the good kind of crazy. Where is this water? Northern Green Anaconda. Wait, this thing was found in the Amazon rainforest. Is this guy swimming in the Amazon River? Like where there are piranhas? Dangerous animals in the Amazon River. Piranha, obviously. Jaguar, bullet, and bull shark. Green Anaconda. That's literally the this thing that he's swimming alongside and it's in the 12 most dangerous Amazon animals. Black caiman crocodile, electric eel. This guy's risking his life. Crazy is an understatement. Fair play to him. Ibex living its best life. That is another majestic one. What a shot. Although I'm not sure how it got up there and I'm not sure that thing was built for it to sleep on. Goes to a dangerous spot. This feels comfortable. I'm just gonna sit here and chill. I love it when you realize that wild animals have so much in common with cats and dogs. All right, next, this enormous Goliath group fun until this monster showed up oh my goodness what an absolute unit oh it's ugly as hell as well i mean you know as far as fish go uh. why do i feel bad for calling an ugly fish ugly it was you who got me into this mess nothing's ugly in nature we're here to appreciate it what a beautiful oh. fish oh okay that actually does look quite nice <laughs> okay maybe not okay all right, maybe not. If I was this dude, I'd be pissed off at Melinda for catching me at such a bad angle. I'm not gonna judge him. When I open the selfie camera, this is exactly what is looking straight back at me. I used to dive with these in the Keys, massive ones in protected waters. They like to hang out in caves and sunken cave-like ships. Pretty chill, they aren't scared of you. I mean, I'd be pretty scared swimming alongside that. They will thump at you if you get too close though. Terrifying. All right, next up, bear chasing horses in Alberta. This is so cool, are they wild horses as well? Oh my goodness. When a bear is on it like this, it is terrifying. See, both a blessing and a curse of being a big fan of animals and wildlife is that the algorithms on social media platforms figure it out pretty quickly. Unfortunately, on platforms like Twitter, where there is just no filter, you get some pretty grim stuff. And fairly recently, just on my timeline, I saw a video of a bear after a successful hunt. And it scarred me. These things are terrifying. If one ever ran at me like that, I don't know what I would do. I don't think there's anything you can do. Yeah, this is true as well. No matter how many times I see them run, it's still crazy seeing bears move as fast as they do. I know they can't keep going at that speed, but damn, they're fast. It just is terrifying because they're so big and bulky, you wouldn't expect them to be that fast, but that is an absolute unit. Like no human is stopping that. Oh, interesting. Farmer living in the north here. Firstly, that bear doesn't have the stamina to keep up for long with those horses. Okay, so they're probably safe. Secondly, I've seen a grizzly go after a foal once and because of the horse's herd behavior they kicked the crap out of the grizzly with hind leg kicks coming left and right and center the grizzly turned and ran as the meal wasn't worth the pain but if it actually got its mouth on a horse yeah the horse would be a goner for sure okay so these horses are most likely fine capturing the white weasel have you ever seen a white weasel this is his winter coat oh that's adorable that is so cute i want one as a pair he's not great at hiding Vegan fish. Good job, little buddy. That is adorable. I mean, yeah, he, he stands out in the rocks. That is awful camouflage. Maybe it sort of helps him blend in with the whitewash in the water. Where are these things though? This looks like it could be like Scotland or something. Native to Eurasia and the northern regions of North America. So literally Europe, Asia, North America. This guy's everywhere. This could literally be any one of like a hundred countries. Whoa, bohemian waxwing. That is a bird and a half. You know, I'm not really one for bird watching or anything like that, but that is a cracking looking thing. Splendid. You know how I know I'm getting old though? Some of my friends are getting into bird watching and Chris MD is one of them. He actually did an episode of Mastermind where Birds of Prey was his like specialty subject. Chris Dixon, British Birds of Prey. Wonder if he knows about this though. Crow removing spikes. These crows removing the bird spikes from the building. 
Look at this. Oh my gosh. <gasps> no, oh my no way. <laughs> There's loads of them. Oh, that's so, I mean, I'm not surprised. Like crows are ridiculously intelligent. There are so many stories of people who have done favors for crows and the crows have like come back, brought their friends, brought them snacks and stuff to say thank you. Like made lifetime friendships from them. Magpies and crows have also been observed to use bird spikes as nest building material. Turns out the spikes are good for fending off potential predators and reinforcing the nest. I mean, that is just genius. Yeah, look, crows are capable of abstract reasoning, complex problem solving, and group decision making. They've got the intelligence of a seven year old human child. That is just crazy. Whoa, gray whale opens its eye. Is it just me or? Oh my God, bro. <laughs> it's gonna make me act up. Okay, no, let's be serious. That is majestic as well. When you realize how big that is, like it's so weird looking into the eyes of an animal, especially an intelligent one. A gray whale's eye is about the size of a baseball and a blue whale's eye is the size of a grapefruit, according to Google. Not as big as I thought it was gonna be, I can't lie. <laughs> Everything reminds me of her. I'm not the only one with my mind in the gutter, apparently. The narwhal, Monodon monoceros. Wow. Again, majestic. Why did narwhals evolve a horn? So their tusks are used by male narwhals to compete for and attract mates, a bit like a peacock's ostentatious feathers or an elk's elaborate antlers. Wow, so this is literally just a flex, like not used for fishing or cracking open crabs or anything like that. Literally just to be like, look at me. But he puts me to shame. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. Hard to believe this is a real creature. Yeah, that's true. You can so imagine how like someone would see this while sailing and be like, huh, imagine a horse had one of these things. I actually went to an exhibition in the Natural History Museum in London about this exact type of thing only a couple of years ago. And it was so interesting. It was basically set up as an exhibition showing things like the skeletons or bones or remains of a certain kind of weird animals and animals like this that might be spotted once or twice you know by sailors every now and then and they'd come home and tell their friends and art would be drawn about it and how all of these things can sort of be misconstrued and you know small bones can be extrapolated into these like magnificent magical beasts and you can so see how a sailor could see one of these like hundreds and hundreds of years ago before the internet before a lot of books before maybe these had even been documented and tell people about them and they would enter this realm of sort of mythological creatures this isn't exactly it but this is such a funny example. While sailing near Haiti, Christopher Columbus believed he saw mermaids. He even got close enough to render himself unimpressed, stating that in person, they were not half as beautiful as they are painted. In actuality, Columbus was looking at manatees. The exhibition had so much cooler, more interesting stuff, but if that exhibition ever pops up for you, whether you're in London or in America, because I think they have it at the Smithsonian as well, go check it out. It's so interesting. Orcas slapping a dolphin straight out the sea. Oh, the amount of air that thing gets is absolutely insane. That's like 20 feet, right? It's about like 20 feet. The power of them is just mind blowing. And as if they use that power to just literally be the bullies of the ocean. What the hell did the dolphin do to deserve that? And yeah, if you've ever seen a documentary about killer whales, you'll know the kinds of things they do to their food. And it is not nice. Wait a second, what do orcas eat? Looking at all populations, orcas are generalist eaters, consuming fish, seals, and sea lions, which is obviously like 90 percent of the documentaries dolphins and porpoises that orca could genuinely be flipping that dolphin around killing it because it's going to eat it i had no idea orcas ate dolphins it's always seals and penguins in the documentaries sharks and rays large whales octopods and squid seabirds and more what i thought that dolphin just got the stuffing knocked out of him turns out he could be dinner man nature is cool but nature is terrifying the snow leopard. This makes me so sad. So when I was younger, I went to the zoo with my granddad. And at the end, you know, there's always a, a gift toy shop. I found this snow leopard that I absolutely fell in love with, but I didn't get it. So I got home, you know, a couple days passed. I was still thinking about it, whatever. A couple weeks pass, it's Christmas. I'm at my granddad's house and I open up this gift and he's got me this snow leopard. And that snow leopard and this teddy that my sister got me when I was tiny were literally on my childhood bed from literally as young as I can remember 
like probably before I was walking and talking to like at least early teens. And even to this day, my snow leopard and Teddy are back home and I'm always like, I always want to make sure that they're comfortable in the cupboard, it's just on the off chance. I don't want to leave them sort of sat in an uncomfortable position or anything. And seeing a snow leopard, it's got a special place in my heart. But I don't think I've ever seen a baby one. Oh, that's so cute. I've been lucky to see one in real life though. It was actually in that platform roulette video on Arthur Hill's channel that I actually saw one for the first time in real life. Man, that is just a great shot though. I really want one as a pet. That's another thing about being an animal lover. Like you want so many animals as pets, but at the same time, you just know that that's not where they should be. They shouldn't be in some dude's house in, in London in the United Kingdom, you know, they should be in the forest or in the snowy mountains or whatever. But the number of times I see an exotic pet online, I'm like, you shouldn't get one, you shouldn't get one, you shouldn't get one, but my heart is crying for one. And this is a perfect example. Oh, this species of clam known as geoduck. I've seen people eat these in mukbangs. That is just bizarre. Unbelievably phallic as well, isn't it? This owl is setting dominance over a woodpecker. Owls, I feel like when you're a kid, are portrayed as like these lovely, gentle, soft birds. And in reality, they are terrifying. <laughs> I mean, still lovely and soft and gentle and all that kind of stuff in real life. But, you know, they have this dark, evil side to them that you don't find out until you see them in real life. Again, another one where a documentary of them successfully hunting will change your opinion of them massively. No way. Whales making sounds of joy. Oh, you want more? No way! Oh, upside down. Oh, that's so sweet. How lucky are we to live in a world where so many animals love to be pet by humans? Like the fact that this giant creature, this giant intelligent creature is coming to the surface and enjoy having a hug with a human is just, it's beautiful, it really is. There is kind and loving life on this planet, not just a few humans. Well, I think it's about time to finish this video, otherwise I'm gonna end up tearing up on camera. I absolutely love this video, so if you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it, please feel free to let me know by liking and commenting, and hopefully I'll do plenty more, so please feel free to subscribe so you can catch the next one. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you there. Bye!